Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Welcome back. Let's go ahead and get started and finish this off. Now everybody is a software engineer in this country. This is not the way to go. <coughs> if needed, we'll do that. That's not the point. But the important thing is human genius must unfold. Real quick on that topic, uh, that's the same thing with my… actually with my birth country. It was nursing at first and now I hear it's um, hospitality. <laughs> yeah, and again, like I said, my my birth country is a big exporter of people, but it's generally women. Women tend to go to get these careers that are getting getting them out of the country. So it was nursing at first, you know, you know, talking about in the United States or in Europe, um, and even some of the closer um, areas. Uh, but yeah, in the United States, and uh, that's, I hear the United States and uh, in Europe are the places. Um, and then that's hospitality. So <laughs> that's what they're going for. If you destroy that because you fixed a peg in your life, it's very unfortunate. Like you said, we had to, we have, we should set uh, specific goals for a short time. If you're setting a goal, we'll definitely work for it very hard. But in due course, we might also resort we see people amongst us or uh, we ourselves, we might resort to some unhealthy practices. Just because this is set in our mind that, okay, this is my goal, I want to achieve it. We might set into unhealthy practices. I, it happens amongst us or maybe at our workplace also. What is unhealthy practice? Uh, like foul competitive or com competitive streak in amongst our fellow mates or foul competitive practices. It could be like pulling someone else down just to go ahead. Of. No. If you pull somebody else down, you did not go ahead, both of you went back. <laughs> That's all that happened. But right now, this continues. This is what I said, if something has to unfold within you, outside should not decide everything. A few things outside will decide. Rest should come from within. That's what a human being means. For other creatures, everything is decided by reaction with the outside. For a human being, there is enough intelligence that a whole lot of things have to come from within, not from outside reactions. So if you keep looking at somebody, how somebody else is doing, how somebody else is doing, now obviously you will take a misstep. They were asking me, <laughs> somebody, Sadhguru, how to beat the Pakistani team <laughs> I said, don't beat the Pakistani team. Just hit the damn ball, huh? <laughs> you don't try to go and beat Pakistan with a cricket bat. <laughs> with a cricket bat, you just hit the damn ball. There's no Pakistan in the ball. You just have to hit the <coughs> ball so that Pakistanis will not find the ball. Like that you must hit it. But if you are looking at Pakistani and wanting to beat him, the ball will smash your face maybe <laughs> So, we need to understand whether it's a game or education or work or whatever else we are doing, the important thing is the process that we are doing. If you are not devoted to the process, result will not happen. It's… it's like this, suppose you want mangoes in your garden. If you sit there and every day do mango meditation, you do… Mango meditation, mango meditation, mango meditation, mangoes will not come. If you just look at the soil, manure, water, sunlight, take care of these things well, absolutely involved in the process, even if you never thought about a mango, one day mango will land on your head anyway, inevitably. If you do the process right, consequence will happen. <laughs> right now you get committed to the consequence. This means in yoga there is a saying, if you have one eye on the goal, you have only one eye to find your way, it's very inefficient <laughs> Both eyes, everything you got into what you're doing right now, result will come. Why will it not come? Why are you bothered how somebody else is doing? Are you doing your best or not? That's all the question is, isn't mm. it with life? Even if you want to become a mystic, you know, don't worry about me. This happened, shall I tell you? Why is that I don't be worried if you are the competitor, if I want to become the mistake? <laughs> <laughs> no, I am not in competition with you 
But I must tell you, because uh, there is an aspiration, it's nice. Real quick before he explains that, so I get what he's trying, uh, what she was trying to ask Sadhguru, and I get what Sadhguru is trying to say. It's the fact that she's saying that, you know, maybe you are focused on your job and doing what you're doing, but other people could be lying about you behind your back to your bosses and all of that. And essentially what Sigur was saying, don't even worry about that. Just be, I, I'm not necessarily paraphrasing, but I'm adding my own little touches to what he's saying, at least how I understand it and how I would interpret it. It's basically, <clears throat> as long as you're being truthful and honest and doing a good job, those lies will come back and catch them because they're saying, oh, he's, you know, they're, if they're talking about, oh, this person's bad in that, let me go watch them. It's like, well, everything that this person said about that person is a lie so far. He's, they're doing everything right. It's like, hmm. And they're saying they're doing this and this, and you're eating, the, and your manager or whatever is continually watching you, and they're, they're seeing the complete opposite of what this other person said. Their, their life's vengeance is going to catch up to them. So no matter what, always do your your best. Uh, give all you got, essentially. Focus on your job. Don't worry about what, what everyone else is doing. Um, and make sure you're, you are doing right uh, to your work and to what you're focused on. And uh, and things will fall into place, essentially. It's how I understood him say that. Uh, it once happened, Shankar and Pillai went to the bar. <laughs> once a couple of drops inside, then everybody starts… that stories get taller and taller, you know. Everybody was saying their own things, big things, about their families and about stuff. So Shankar and Pillai waited and then they nudged him, Hey, what? You got nothing to say? No good. So, no, my uncle was a great mystic. He knew the exact time, date and mode of death in his life. Oh, really? He knew the time, date and how he will die well ahead of time? Said, yes, my uncle, great mystic. Really, how did he come to know? The judge told him <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. oh. That took a little bit. I was generally thinking, it's like, how would he do that to make his own predictions come through? He has control over his life and how it all then, and this is the judge told him, oh gosh. <laughs> See, there's a possibility, huh? <laughs> you have drifted the whole thing in law. That's a nice thing. <laughs> so, uh, Sadhguruji, I would also like to open uh, certain questions from the audience. Please. Since we have time constraints, so we will be only getting up for only two questions. Uh, so I think. Who oh wow! I will say the audience kind of you know it kind of sucks. The audience can't really ask too many questions. I'm sure everyone wants to ask the guru a question. Uh, uh, again, I think they I think they say they do pull from the audience and try to get the best ones and at least what most people are asking. And that's a really good job, honestly, uh, from the panel. Namaskaram Sadhguru, I'm Ayushi Dikshit, a third year political science student. Sadhguru, my question is that today, on one hand, we see all these uh, scientific, psychological methods, whereas on the other side, we have spirituality and mysticism. So, um, how can we collaborate both the aspects, both the factors and have a better governance and a better society maybe? You think governance needs psychological treatment? <laughs> <laughs> yes, there are concepts in uh, political science that, you know, uh, work psychologically also. See, uh, this is a culture where always the spiritual leaders always largely worked with the kings of the time. Not because they wanted to bum around in the palaces and get some benefits, simply because they saw, unless you benefit the man, unless you benefit the man who has the power to make difference to millions of people, people will not really benefit. If you get to a position of responsibility or power that every word you utter, every thought, every emotion and every action that you perform has influence over millions of people, the first and foremost thing you need to do is to fix yourself so that how you think, how you feel, how you speak and how you act 
he's calibrated for the well-being of the people. So, this is why whether you take Krishna, Krishna's whole life was just about marrying political system and the spiritual process. You take Gautam Buddha, all his life he's working with kings because you can work from bottom up. That is one way, but that's a long way. Today it is possible because we have communication. I want you to imagine when a Gautama walks from village to village, if he speaks, even ten people will not hear. Village to village, village to village, forty years of his enlightened life, he walked and walked and walked. But impact is not good, he knows that. So he goes to the kings and try to impact them, because once they're impacted, they will change things in the nation. Because monarchy is a kind of autocratic rule, if he gets it, he will make sure something happens. In a democratic process, it is not so impactful, but it is still impactful. Here people are the leaders, but fortunately today we have ability to communicate like never before. We can sit here and talk to the whole world if you want. This was never possible. Many great beings have come, but unfortunately when they spoke, hardly fifty people could hear. And even if they heard, somebody wrote down all wrong. Um, real quick with that one, we have the ability to communicate with social media and then there's TikTok. And there's crazy stuff and all these other social media. Yeah, it's kind of weird. We have this great way of communicating and what do we use it for? <laughs> I'm just thinking like, I mean, I guess Sadhguru is in these times. And at least, like I said, Guru might be on TikTok, I'm not sure. But at least the things he put out there is like wise. And what do we put out there? Pretty much memes. Don't get me wrong, I think a good meme is great, but then there's just a whole bunch of other stuff there too. And after a thousand years, another hundred people modified it in so many different ways. By the time it comes to you after a thousand, two thousand years, you don't know what the hell is coming to you. But today, see these cameras are recording, if you say something different than what I said, they will play the video. I'm saying this was never possible before. So now we can work up, from grassroots to up. But at that time, the only way to work was top down, because down is not possible to reach, only top is possible to reach. So today we can work both ways, but Ground up is more effective today, that is why we're working with the people. So between psychology and spirituality, what is the difference? See, with psychology you're trying to analyze the, the mechanics of thought process in a certain way, essentially thought and emotion. But in the yogic culture, in the spiritual cultures of India, we don't give any significance to your thought. You can think what you want. We know it's just a surface of who you are. Because thought is coming only from the data that you have gathered, isn't it so? Hello? Yeah. Only from the limited data that you have gathered, thought is coming. But your behavioral patterns are come patterns are coming from dimensions much deeper than thought. A whole lot of people who if you have ever been psychologically little disturbed, suddenly you see something else beyond what you have known, what your regular thought pattern and emotional patterns are, something beyond that is influencing you and pushing you and pulling you in ways that you can't help yourself. Yes or no? You've seen such people if it's not happened to you. So, we don't pay any attention to your present level of thought and emotion because thought patterns and emotional patterns we just see is an acquired pattern which has happened because of the data that you have. but. Other dimensions of influence within you are there, we wish to bring balance to that dimension. But for this, you need willingness and you have to work with people. But with psychology also, you have to endlessly talk. Most people cannot be talked out of anything, they will talk you out of it, okay? <laughs> yes. So, when it, talking doesn't work, when counseling doesn't work, you have chemical bombing, you put chemicals into the system in the form of pills or whatever, mm. which could balance because after all human experience is all rooted in chemistry. Every human experience has a chemical basis to it, what you call as peace, joy, 
blissfulness, agony, ecstasy, stress, anxiety, everything has a chemical basis to it. So now we are looking at how to create a chemistry of blissfulness. This is the greatest chemical factory on the planet, do you agree with me? The most sophisticated and complex chemical factory on the planet. The question is only, are you a great manager or a lousy manager? That's all it is. <laughs> so, we are looking at how to manage one's chemistry without taking external inputs. The modern psychiatry is looking at how to manage human chemistry by putting outside ingredients. Well, when mm. things have gone to the extreme, that's the way to do it. If things are reasonably in control, we have systems through which one can work themselves out of it. So, uh, Anandji? Anandji? So, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, um, America or maybe Western countries or maybe even just developed areas are looking for quick fixes. Um, you look at a dating world, they, again, they, they, it must be perfect or they'll move on to the next one. They're not willing to work at it. So, if it takes work, generally speaking, uh, I don't think it's necessarily the majority of people not willing to put in the work to make something work, whether it's themselves, a relationship, a job, or I don't know, whatever else they're trying to do. I think this is in the minority at the moment, but I feel that it may be growing, but I don't know how big it is. And, um, and I, I, it's, it's, I think it's a developed nations thing, a developed area, let me put it that way, not nations, but developed uh, cities, whatever it may be. Um, it's just because, again, uh, food, sh uh, water, and shelter has been taken care of. Once those three things are taken care of, we're looking for other, we're looking for other problems. Uh, question? Last question, one, one last question. Okay. Uh, sir, ask. Ask, ask. Please give the mic. Give the mic. Uh, oh, very good afternoon, sir. Uh, my name is Sushant Kumar Kishwa. I'm a research scholar from ESU and uh, very much fortunate to clear, have a uh, time to clear my doubt from you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, like you know, seven years back when I uh, got admission in BHU in diploma course, it was a very small course, just a part time. What, was course? what course? Diploma in Tourism Management. Okay. I was very much happy to get enrolled in that course. I went to my house to my father that uh, shouting like anything that. I got admission in BHU as like I have cracked I am Ahmedabad. So like you know my father was okay fine and now after seven years I have cracked net and uh, got admission PhD but I am not happy with what I am doing sir because I don't know I have lost my spark. At that time sir in diploma I was so much con concerned about my study and uh, being a part yeah. of BHU, the reputed university said like I, I was uh, more, much more confident just, just enough. Please, for please, please, brief the question. What is the question? My question is, I have lost my spark, okay? And I am not a very much uh, like, you know, continuous, consistently motivated person. Okay. I have lost my motivation how to regain that, to live my life and lead in a, in a like, <laughs> joyful way, so to be regain your inner peace. Thank you, sir. See, uh, the nature of life <laughs> is such. <laughs> If you… if you go outside in the garden and try to catch an ant, the BHU ant <laughs> who is born here, who's grown up here and probably he'll die here, that BHU ant, if you try to catch him, he'll say, okay, to hell with my life, okay, crush me if you want. Is it so? <laughs> he'll do everything to protect himself. Huh? He values his life, isn't it? Very much or no? Tiny little creature that we may not even notice, we may step on him without even seeing him, unfortunately. Mm. But he values his life immensely. Does he or no? He's got spark <laughs> But you, a human being, at least on this planet, you're the peak of evolution, physiologically at least, yes? If other behavioral aspects, if we may have questions 
but physiologically at least the most evolved creature on the planet. What the most evolved creature on the planet means is, it has the most complex neurological system and it has the highest level of cerebral capability. That means you can think, you can remember, you have memory. You have a very vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of imagination. An ant doesn't have such a vivid sense of memory, nor does he have any great imagination. He has some, but he has a presence of mind about the life that he is living. Because the education systems that you are going through right from kindergarten level is such that it is about everything except you. It's about everything else. Somebody is PhD in tourism, somebody is PhD in biotechnology, somebody is PhD in something. Nothing about this. How does this function? There is no attention at all. A human being functions. You know, you have a Kalabhairava temple here. What this means is, a human being exists in three times. He lives because of the richness of his memory. How rich is your memory determines what you will do and what you will not do right now, isn't it so? <laughs> so memory is important, the present experience is important and how vivid is your imagination for tomorrow <laughs> is very important. Right now the problem is, these things have all gotten mixed up because discipline of faculty has simply not come. Nothing has been taught to our children that there needs to be… Discipline means people think English kind of discipline, walking like this, like idiots. Discipline of faculty is not there. Because of this, your own mind turns against you. What happened ten years ago, you still suffer? Hello? What may happen day after tomorrow, you already suffer? Because there's no discipline of faculty. You don't know how to use your memory, you don't know how to use your imagination. Your memory makes you suffer, your imagine makes… imagination makes you suffer <laughs> and you think you are suffering your life. You are not suffering your life, you are only suffering the two greatest faculties of being human, vivid sense of memory and a fantastic sense of hum imagination, isn't it so? <clears throat> so what I think about that when he says that is uh, obviously you think of the things that you've done, like you know, for work example. So you've done something, all of a sudden, oh my gosh, did I do it right? I don't know. Oh my gosh. So you start suffering about the things that you've done in your past because you're not sure if you've done it right or not. Then you start thinking of the future. It's like, oh my gosh, when I come into work, my boss is going to yell at me because of the things I've done, the thing that I did in the past that I don't know if I did right. So you're suffering from this one action in the past, your imagination in the future, thinking that you're going to suffer from your boss because you think the thing that you've done in the past is wrong. And all of a sudden you get there, it's like, okay, good job. And you're like, oh my God. <laughs> you're, you're sitting there suffering from a past that you're not sure that you did right to an imagination of the future that you think you're going to get punished for. And yeah, um, I try, I, I, I still somewhat suffer from that, I will say, but I've gotten better. Um, I've always, this is my thinking, it's always, again, give it 110%. And then, you know what? Let things happen <laughs> the way they are. Just as long as you do your best, things will fall into place, whether it be in your favor or not, you know, no point of worrying about it because you don't know. If you suffer the greatest faculties that you have, what can we do with you? If you suffer an ailment, understandable. If you suffer a disability, understandable. If you suffer your ability, hopeless case. <laughs> Yes or no? Well, hopefully not. You're suffering your capabilities. If you're suffering your disability, it's all right. You're suffering your capabilities. I must tell you this, about four, five months ago, I think, you might have seen it on the news, a young lady, thirty-four-year-old lady, who was a television anchor in Hyderabad, jumped off the fifth floor window, killed herself, left a note, nobody is responsible for my death, my brain is my enemy. Wow. How many million years it took to get this brain to this size and now it becomes your enemy? She articulated this, but 
This is true with almost ninety percent of the human beings, they are suffering their own intelligence, isn't it? If you take away half their brain, if you take away half their brain, they will be peaceful. Yes. And that is why a whole bunch of idiots are going about saying that the ultimate goal of life is peace of mind. Such people will only rest in peace <laughs> Now you, young man, they kept you here for too long, seven years, they should have thrown you out in four years, then you would have done something <laughs> hmm. University life, if somebody is not keying you up all the time, it could become too easy, you know. Even I remember, when I went to the university, most of the time we were in the canteen, not in the garden. The easiest part of my life was university <laughs> uh, I think uh, I know nobody's going to like it and… Uh, but I think this university time must be shortened unless somebody is producing something brilliant. They must be chucked out within three to four years' time, everybody. <laughs> I will say this, um, I, uh, I don't know if it's anywhere else, but I know in… in America, perhaps the West, and again, perhaps, uh, you know, everywhere where there is a university, um, close to university, um, I'm wondering if the university is the ultimate goal. Like, everyone wants to go to university because that… in their mind, it's like, if I graduate this, I'm guaranteed and set for life to get a job because after I get diploma, I'm guaranteed a job. But it's, it's not… at least in, in America, it's not the case. Um, there are certain things called trade schools that are not universities, but what trade schools do, if, if I remember correctly, is um, they teach you a skill, a very specific skill, like welding or mecha car mechanic or, um, you know, just or certain, certain skills that are very specific for a job. And it's, you're not gonna, I don't think you get a diploma for it or anything, but these are jobs that are very much needed that you don't need a, a college education for, and they're high paying jobs because everyone, I, I, not everyone, but I think most people who go into college are looking for like really comfy jobs, like our desk jobs and stuff. Um, most, I mean, obviously doctors are not necessarily desk jobs, but you know, they're, they're, I hear they're like nothing but paperwork for the most part. It's like they spend most of the time writing up prescription and make sure all the paperwork's filled out so they don't get sued. It's really crazy. And same with nurses, not exactly a desk job, but it's relatively easy so long as your patients are, <laughs> are good. I've worked in the medical field and the murderers are saying like, you know, when the patients are good, it's good. When they're bad, it's bad. So it, it goes both sides there. Um, but yeah, and then a lot of the, the high paid jobs that go offshore drilling or, um, you know, whatever it may be, they tend to pay a lot higher, don't require an education just because it's better to learn a skill and to do it and, and use that skill than to get a diploma and then realize that you, uh, uh don't need it. Like for, for example, me, I graduated, uh, college, got a bachelor's and not using it, <laughs> but luckily enough for me, I got, uh free reign to, I got paid to go to college in a sense. So I will say that's a, a benefit, at least for my part, but yeah, I didn't use the, I didn't use the education at all. No, I went to college, got paid to do it. And due to the, the time that I graduated, it's the biggest problem. It was during a bad times in the United States. I think, I won't say what year, but just say there, there was during a bad time, it was very difficult to get a job. Entry level job was like seven years experience, an entry level job. If they're doing something very focused and very intense, they must stay. Otherwise, see this is all I'm telling all of you young people, do whatever the hell you want in your life. But you must be intensely focused on something. If you're not investing in anything your life, it will just go waste. Because as I told you in the very beginning, one basic ingredient of your life is time and this is just going away. Already you're two hours closer to your grave since I came here. <laughs> yes or no? Yeah. Two hours closer to Manikarnika. <laughs> I, I don't yes know what that no? is. Yes, you are not immortal. It's just a limited amount of time. Are you a precious life? I'm asking. Is your life precious to you? Yes. Huh? Then you must decide where you want to invest this life. If this is precious, if this is worthless, throw it somewhere. 
if this is precious, invest in something worthwhile, isn't it? So if you invest this in something wor worthwhile, not spark, you will be a flame all the time. That's why my first question was being a mystic, right? Huh? <laughs> Investing it in a good one, being a mystic. Uh, <laughs> because you are a lawyer, <laughs> because you are a lawyer, judge may tell you. <laughs> no, the, the thing is that with judge, Supreme Court or High Court? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay, you can have a concluding remarks. Okay. As you said, uh, that time is limited, limited, so we are approaching towards the end of this <laughs> wonderful gossip. I would like to thank you for spending your time, because if time is money, then you have spent millions on us hey, today. No, 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 let me correct you. Time is not money, time is life. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> See, uh, she's… she's already a practicing dentist <laughs> Money, 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 money <laughs> Wow <laughs> If I would say thank you, I know I'll… I'll <laughs> reach out of words, I'll not have some words to express my gratitude. The only thing is, if somebody would ask me, what have you got in Kashi, now I can answer that once I had Sadhguru then. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, the end is the judge, not the lawyer. <laughs> Yes, Sadhguru, uh, uh, one… Uh, I think one phone rings and when you said that when you hear the song, you dance. And I saw a video of Ranveer Singh, sir, so can we have that… Uh, <laughs> okay, because… 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 Uh, because that is Ashwab Nagari and we just strong it every time. Sir, please, if we can, that your favorite one. <laughs> uh oh. I would… Uh, uh, music will come, we'll wait. But, uh, I want to see the young people dance and then we will see, <laughs> all right? Anyway, <laughs> uh, I want… I want all of you to understand and appreciate this, <clears throat> that… Uh, see, we are… we are living in a country where still millions of people, nearly five hundred million people probably, don't even get to eat properly. All right? In such a country, when all of us have the privilege that at least we don't have to search for our food, it's there. And not just that, you're in a premier institution like BHU, thanks to Malviya ji that uh, he created this. You are part of his vision to educate this India, where when the British left, we were over ninety percent illiterate. So, at that time, somebody had the vision to create this and you are part of this great institution. I want you to always appreciate the privilege that you are here, which so many others have not found in this country. Please make use of this time at the university to build yourself. Don't worry about the nation, about the society, about this, that. Build yourself into such a grand human being. <clears throat> because if there are no great human beings, there will be no great society. There's no great society, there's no great nation. There are no great nations, there's no great world. So you can't build a great world or a great nation. You can only make yourself into a great human being and around you wonderful things will happen. It's my wish and my blessing, the best should happen to you. Thank you very much. Uh, great, great, uh, great quote there at the end. Don't worry about the nation. Interesting. That'd be kind of... How do I say? I wouldn't say shocking. It's like, obviously you should worry about the nation. But what he says is true, though. The fact that you can worry about the nation all you want, but if you don't fix yourself, if you don't... You are going to contribute. If everyone can fix... fix I don't know what the right word to say, but to fix themselves uh, in terms of being peace with themselves at the very least and not react... Uh, as Sadhguru said in uh, in previous videos of this, um, but be able to think things through, not to have their emotions or thoughts, you know, control them, but them control themselves. I think the like I don't know if it's this video or another one that he says, but he says if at least ten percent of the pe the population is uh, I don't I don't think it's aware, but able to to in a sense control their bodies. 
then it would be a much better world, <laughs> which I would not disagree with. I mean, um, because a lot of people right now, again, oh my gosh, I, I keep thinking this, like, man, I hope I die before, <laughs> before, um, before this country freaking, you know, uh, implode on itself. That's a really terrible way of looking at it, but you know what? <laughs> I, I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> speaking the truth here a little bit, because, whew, right now it's it's getting a little crazy, and and it's so much attention to external things, so much attention to everything else, and they're not even looking within themselves to see that they don't even have themselves, um, how do I say, uh, fixed. I don't know what the right word, like peace with themselves, I guess. Um, that their emotions are not running rampant, their thoughts are not running rampant. It's all out of control and all reactionary. And no time to think or consider other people. You have to believe in what they believe and nothing else. If you don't believe in what they believe 100% on everything they believe, you're a bigot or whatever, you know. You're a snowflake or whatever it is. There's just no room for talk. It's just believe or don't or GTFO. Uh, get the fudge out of here. <laughs> it's it's becoming more and more decisive because I'm, I'm noticing a lot of people are not wanting to talk. Um, I, I, I watch a few YouTube videos of even like YouTube streamers. Sorry, not YouTube streamers. Uh, Twitch streamers about like certain games where there if they just let's see if there's just one thing potentially wrong with it they blow it up and saying you shouldn't play this or play that it's a freaking video game there's big drama on it and it's crazy it's just it's really crazy i don't know if you guys know what i'm talking about or not but anyways i, I try to kind of touch up here and there but it's kind of crazy anyways that's my reaction to sad guru at uh bh uh bhu like I said, glad I, I kind of paused it for the last one because I figured I'd talk too much anyways. So if you like my content, please consider subscribing, thumbs up, thumbs down, down below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next vid.